Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about the upcoming DJI event in New York City on January 23rd. Now there's been a ton of speculation on the internet about what products might show up at that event, and I've kind of stayed out of the conversation on purpose, because honestly we just got back from CES and we're working on a lot of clips on the products we saw out there and we're real busy working on that stuff. Plus I thought to myself, by the time I get the clip done and actually post it on the channel, we're all going to kind of know what products they're releasing anyway, so what's the point? But during the last week, I've gotten so many emails from you guys asking me, Rick, what product do you think is coming? Is it a P5, a new Mavic, a Spark? Maybe there's a new drone we haven't seen before. Then I thought, you know what, let me sit down and put a clip together, because I really have thought a lot about it, and I'm going to give you some predictions from an engineering perspective of what I think they could possibly release at this event coming up next Tuesday. So before I get into it, though, let me say... I have no inside information. So everybody that's on the internet talking about it is speculating at this point. I'm adding my voice to that speculation. I wish I had uh, an NDA agreement with them or I was on an embargo list where they would ship me products in advance. And if you're listening, DJI, I'd be a good guy to have on that list because I love your products and I love tearing them apart and comparing them to other products. So maybe the next one you release put me on the list. But before I get into it too deeply, I have to say again, everybody's speculating. Nobody out there knows about it because honestly, if you're on that list, and you let any of it leak, you're never going to be on that list again. So anybody out there that says they've got the pictures and they've got this, they've got that, it's all nonsense. So don't believe any of it. And, and don't believe what I'm telling you either because I'm speculating. But now that we're past all that, let me talk a little bit about what I think you may see on Tuesday. And again, I'm going to put my engineer's hat on and pretend for a second that I work for DJI and I'm part of the relaunch or release teams for the products that are out there. So I think they've done a really good job of filling gaps in their product line, but I still feel like there's probably places where other products could be released. So let's think about sort of their history up to this point. They released the Phantom line, which was a phenomenally popular line from them. They've had multiple iterations of that, and a lot of people have said, Rick, do you think it's gonna be a Phantom 5? I don't. I think the Phantom 5 is a real product, probably gonna see it in the springtime, it'll be in a launch announcement, all its own, and I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. And I've got a whole series of clips I'm putting together where I've really thought through the engineering behind it and sort of the evolution of where drones are going. So if you haven't seen some of those clips, keep an eye on that. I've got a couple more I've got almost finished that I'll be posting as well. But set the Phantom 5 aside for now. I don't think that's going to be at the launch. Could it be another Mavic? Pretty good possibility. Could it be another Spark? Probably not. But I think it's going to land somewhere between these two, and there's a lot of reasons for that. So if you think about the Phantom product, 1500 bucks, it's way out of the range of most consumers that are starting quads for the first time. They want to start smaller and less expensive. So the Mavic filled that gap. So the Mavic comes in at around 1000 bucks. This comes in at around 400 bucks. Really good drone to start with. You can step up to a better quality drone, a prosumer drone, and this guy, this is really an entry-level drone. But there's a gap between those of $600. So you've got this at 400 this at 1000 could they make this less expensive and more like the Spark, maybe a little smaller, and fit it in that, I'm going to guess here, but $599 range? Probably a good move for them. And I think that's where you'll see one of the products released. I think there are people here that want to get here but don't really need the range of this, maybe don't need the OcuSync technology, don't need the sophisticated remote. So maybe the product that's going to be launched here will still be part of the Mavic line. It'll fold, it'll be a little smaller, have a simpler remote, probably not have OcuSync probably be a Wi-Fi based product, which will still fly about a mile, mile and a half. That's pretty good. This has got about 15 minutes of flight time, about 30 minutes of flight time. Somewhere in that 20, 22 minute flight time would be good. I think that price point at around 600 bucks would put, uh, put a drone in the public's hands that really is kind of an entry level prosumer drone, if there's such a thing, at a price that they could probably afford and be very comfortable with. So I wouldn't be surprised by that. But then the question becomes, what happens to the Mavic? Because if I'm putting a less expensive Mavic out, does this guy go away and does the new Mavic 2 come? Now the Mavic 2, for me, would be a real big improvement over what the Mavic can do. It would have a longer flight time, it would have obviously the, uh, the platinum blades on it for the lower uh, noise and the better efficiency. I think they would move to a one inch sensor. Uh, so I think there is a spot to move a Mavic 2 into the marketplace, but they released, you know, the Mavic Platinum. They've got the Alpine white model. They're still selling really, really well. I think, you know, from my estimations, it's probably the most popular drone that DJI has out in the market today for, for so many different reasons, but I guess they are due for the Mavic 2. So maybe at this launch, wouldn't be surprised at all if we see a drone somewhere in between these two in a price point around 600 bucks, 599, something in that price range and maybe one more expensive this, maybe 1100 or 1200 that could be the Mavic 2. But that that's kind of a long shot for that one. I think this drone fits here. 
I think they're also going to cater, and again, I've mentioned before, they've got a really strong following in the prosumer market. They're going to cater from here on down. So that product would be the high end of the entry-level drones. I also think there's room below this guy for a drone, right? This is still a $400 drone. And if you're starting in drones, $400 is a lot of money to drop on something you may not be flying in a month, right? You might try it, like it a little bit, but not like it enough to fly it as often as you should to justify $400 cost. They did drop the price in this over Christmas, but I still think there's got to be a drone down here someplace that's less expensive, somewhere around the $100 mark. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't there a drone at the uh, CES show that fit that bill, the Tello? Yeah, there was. And didn't it have G DJI technology inside of it? Yeah, it did. Well, how come DJI is not talking about it? Now, one thing that was really interesting was early when that Telodrome was first announced, I immediately got to the DJI website and started scrambling and searching and stuff. And I found a page on the DJI website for selling the Tello. So that disappeared before the announcement. Made me wonder, is that something that should have been there, shouldn't have been there? Why was it created? Marketing teams had to put that together. So I would not be surprised at all, and these are my two strong predictions, of a product coming somewhere between these two. Could I be probably called a Mavic, and I know the term's been thrown around, Mavic Air. I don't know where that came from, but it's gonna be some Mavic that fits between these two. It'll be a foldable drone, probably have the same micro two thirds sensor on it. I bet it'll be based on Wi-Fi. I bet it'll have a simpler controller. And I'm betting the retail price will be somewhere around $599. And again, just my, my gut on that. If I'm marketing, that's where I'm going. I'm also coming out with a less expensive drone, 100 bucks, 130 bucks, something in that price range that doesn't fold, that has a lot of the functionality of the Spark, but it's way less expensive. Probably doesn't have a controller, probably flies from a phone, but you can uh, Bluetooth up one of the game controllers like you can with the Spark if you want to use sticks. I wouldn't be shocked if that was the Tello. So I could see them announcing two drones at this, the Mavic, sort of the lighter version of the Mavic or less expensive Mavic at 600, and something like the Tello, if not the Tello exactly, at $100. Those are the two that I'm going with. Now the big question for me still remains, what about the Mavic? Again, it's a, it's a fantastic drone. It's hands down my most favorite drone to fly. I fly it way more than I do my Inspire my Phantom because it's just so darn portable. This one should be a little bit smaller, even more portable, but I'm still loving the Mavic. What's above the Mavic? What's coming as the Mavic 2? Like I said, they could improve flight time, make it quieter, make it a little more aerodynamic, a little larger battery, and certainly a bigger sensor. A one-inch sensor on the front would make this the perfect drone for me because it's got the video capabilities, it's got incredibly cool, reliable flights based on OcuSync technology. Could they add a digital display here like they did with the Evo from the Autel people? Well, you could, and that would be kind of cool. And even though that Autel Evo has the three-inch display in there that's LCD that you can actually see first-person view, Honestly, it's kind of a gimmicky thing because older guys like me looking at a three inch display, it's too darn small to get the actual focus I need where I'm flying. So I'm gonna end up using a phone or some kind of tablet anyway, but I think they could add that. So if they're gonna release a Mavic 2 at this event, all the things I just mentioned, the one inch sensor, longer flight times, bigger battery, quieter blades, and probably an LCD in the remote would put that at around a $1,200, $1,199 price range. So maybe this is going away. This is going to be less expensive. The Mavic 2 is going to be a little more expensive. Kind of an interesting thing. Now, one last thing I want to say. I know a lot of people were speculating that this event was, the event was rushed because Evo came out, right? So I talked about Evo in a clip already. The Evo from Autel is a pretty cool looking drone. It isn't hit the market yet. So, you know, Evo is a great product on paper and I got a chance to handle it and play with it and look at it, but it isn't out in the market yet. So until that's released, it's not really a real drone. I mean, a lot of people... Let's think about Lily. A lot of people talk about cool drones and put videos together about cool drones that never hit the market. So when, the, when that product, the Evo, hits the market, then it'll be a competitor. So people are thinking, oh, they got to rush out the new products because the Evo hit at the market. I don't believe that for a second because if you've ever been involved in any kind of launch event, those kind of things take months to plan, months to put together. Plus, you can't build a product like this overnight. They've got to take months of engineering. It could be a year, year and a half of engineering to put a product together. But I guarantee you when the Mavic hit, there was a team already working on Mavic 2. And if the Mavic 2 hits at the show, Mavic 3 is probably already in prototype. So they're always moving generationally ahead with new frames and new types of uh, technology to stay ahead of that curve. But I don't believe for a second that they rushed this event because of that Evo announcement. I think this event was probably planned for five or six months. A lot of people are asking, why didn't they launch it at CES? Well, think about it a second. CES had a lot of big announcements from DJI. They came out with the uh, Osmo Mobile 2. They came out with two Ronin S products, which are fantastic products. Do you really want to throw a new drone into that mix with all the noise of CES going on out there? You want to have your own separate event so you capture as much press as possible. That's exactly what they're doing. So that marketing team at DJI 
is as brilliant as the engineering team is for building this technology. By picking these dates and generating this kind of excitement, getting geeks like me fired up about an event less than two weeks from the biggest Disneyland event out there at CES possible for geeks like me. So I'm all excited again about this event on Tuesday. I cannot wait to be there with the camera. And again, I tell you, we're going to be taking a lot of footage, so stay tuned to the channel. Stick tight here because we're going to be doing a lot of overview clips of whatever products they announce. And I'm going to do my best to get interviews and get my hands on a product, get one early. We're going to order whatever they release so we can tear it apart here on the bench. But that's my speculation. So in summary, something between the Mavic and the Spark fits this price point at around 600 bucks. Something below the Spark that's a buck, buck 30. And a slight possibility you'll see a Mavic 2, probably an $1,100, $1,200 price range if, in fact, it comes out. But go with those first two predictions of what they're releasing on Tuesday. Now, we'll see how close I am. I'm going to look like Nostradamus or I'm going to look like an idiot. So we'll have to see what happens on Tuesday. But anyway, it's been fun putting it together. If you have any questions, drop them below. I hope we're answering all the questions you guys have sent me in the last two weeks in this clip. But if not, drop them below and I'll get back to you. I really appreciate you guys watching these. It seems like you're enjoying them. I'm having a ball putting them together, as I say every time. So as long as you're enjoying them, we'll keep doing them. Until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.